the major things you'll have to adjust to as you start learning Linux is the fact that many times, especially if you're asking for help, people are gonna ask you to run commands in the terminal. This may seem really strange when it comes to tasks like looking up files, configuring an application, or other simple tasks when you have an entire desktop environment devoted to being a GUI to prevent you from having to run commands in the terminal. It may also be frustrating because you don't really understand what these commands are trying to do. In this video, I want to try to break down five terminal commands and really try to remove the abstraction from them. Oftentimes I see videos where they'll go into the terminal and they'll run the commands, but you don't always understand exactly what the command is actually doing from a GUI standpoint. So we're going to see what you would do in the GUI to actually execute what the command in the terminal is doing. Before we get to those commands though, I just want to talk about three quick reasons why you may want to use the terminal more often or maybe why people request you use the terminal when you ask for help. The first one is consistency. There may be different directories you need to use in certain distros, but generally the same commands are available in most distros. The most common shells that you'll hear about are bash, fish, and zsh, and all of the basic commands will be very similar in those. The second one is speed, and I hope we can kind of show this a bit more during this video when it comes to certain situations. And the last one, and this is one that I actually find really important at times, is the ability to see actual logs of what's happening. Sometimes if a program's not launching, I can go into the terminal and try to launch it there, and it'll give me a much better idea about why it's not launching. So the first command I want to talk about is the cd command, which is change directory. And we're going to take a look at what this actually looks like in the GUI first. Okay, as you can see here, this is just my home folder. I am going to go into the code folder. I need to find the actual folder, which is way over here. Double click it, and now I'm in it. So I'm in my home folder, the same as I was in Dunar. If I say CD and then code, I can get over to the code folder. If I need to go back, I can say CD period period. Alternately, if I need to go directly to my home folder, I can just type CD and hit enter and I'll get there. But that's that's fine, but you're like, okay, well that's still seven keystrokes, four for code, one for a space and two for CD. But if I say CD and then start typing code and press tab, nothing happens right now. But if I press tab twice, you'll see that I have two folders that potentially be matching up with this. And so I can press the D and I can press tab and then it will go ahead and fill in the rest. Now, if I didn't have content creation as a folder name, I wouldn't even have to go that far. I probably could just honestly type the C. Yeah, because it's filling in the O because it knows that's the root of those two folders. So yeah, that's what I could do. So if I just didn't have content creation, I could type CD space C and I could have the entire thing filled in. Again, this may seem like a very simple operation and it is, but there's more you can do with this. So now let's say that I wanted to go somewhere else. Say I wanted to go somewhere in the root directory. So in Thunar, it's actually a pretty easy thing to do this. I can click up here in the bar and I can then start typing. And so I want to go to usr slash bin. I can do that and I can open that fairly easily. Some particular file managers, I think of Dolphin. This is a bit trickier to do. You have to make sure that you kind of get into the right mode for it. It's not a big deal, but it's just something where ultimately you're having to do this. But the thing is, you're having to interact with the mouse. You're having to go up and click this. You're having to then type it out and then you can go and actually view these files. If you needed to jump back, you could start using this over here on the left and that would get you at least back to your home folder. But in the terminal, I can say CD then slash USR slash bin. And if I go back to my home folder and I can I say CD and then slash U, I can do and then bin. So I could say, you know, CD slash U slash B and hit tab after the U and the B and I could get that to auto fill in again. This is particularly useful when you're needing to go several layers deep. So for example, if I needed to go somewhere and kind of deep into the config folder, I could say CD and then this for home and then dot config. And after that, I could then see what options were here and I could go into Emacs and I could get there. I could do this in my file manager, just, just like normal. I would have to go and unhide the file. So normally I believe it's gonna look more like this and you'd have to press control H, at least in Thunar and Dolphin, to unhide the files. 
and then you would be able to actually find the .config folder and then go in from there. However, once you get to the config folder, you can see how many files I can see right here. And if you actually click it, I mean, there's a lot of files to look through here and you have to make sure that you're finding the one you need. So it's again, something where you have to scan, you have to look, and if your files are not in an order you expect, this is something where it can be a bit more difficult to find that. So let's talk about one that we've kind of went around and that's PWD, Present Working Directory. Uh, let me make this uh, go back to the top of the screen. So if I type PWD, that's gonna give me the directory I'm in, in Thunar. So you can see I'm in bash.config up here, but if I click on it, you'll notice there's a home in front of that. And I could go to the Emacs folder just like I could, or maybe I need to open the i3 folder. I could open that and I could open this. And I mean, I could still see that, but if you're already in the terminal doing another transaction, PWD is gonna be very helpful to kind of keep track where you are if you need it. The next command is a command called ls. And let's take a look at this Emacs folder in Thunar so that we can kind of have a comparison point. So you can see I have many files here and I can right click, I can go to properties and I can see things like permissions and things like that where I can see who owns the file and some other information about it, the size, the update date and time. That's great, uh, but what if I want to view all the files here and I want more information about all of them? That's where ls comes in, because I can say ls, I can get a list of all the files and folders in this particular directory. The blue entries here are folders and the white entries are files. Then I can say ls-l and get a different type of list. You'll see I have the permissions over here on the left. So you have read, write, and X is execute. I believe D is delete. And you can see exactly what permissions each person has. This is also the file size, I believe, right here. In this row, you can see the last time it was updated, the name, as well as the owner and group. And I can also do ls-a and that will also show me hidden files in this particular folder. So that can be useful if you're needing to do that. Some people will create an alias for ls and have it always be ls-a, or maybe they do lsl, or maybe do lsa, something like that. Or maybe they'll just even do ll or la and have that be a shortcut to these particular commands just because they are used so often. I tend to find this method to, for me personally, to be a bit easier because sometimes it is difficult to find something in a busy, you know, if there's a lot of files and folders here, it can get difficult to actually skim through everything without necessarily maybe having to re-sort this particular screen. The other nice thing, and you can kind of do this, maybe you could do edit, is there a find? Uh, I don't see one. I'm sure there is one and I'm just not I'm just looking right past it. So normally a file manager will have like a search. Sometimes it will limit to the current folder and sometimes it will not. I do not actually see where you could do that here, but I suspect I'm just missing it because I'm just not as familiar with Dunar. I'm more familiar with Dolphin. But just for example here, let's say I wanted to find every entry that had a an entry of init. Like it just had init in it. I could say grep init, and you can see early init right there. And grep is just something that you can use to search. I'm not gonna go into it further in this video. I just wanted to kind of show you how you can eventually, once you get better at these, combine things to do a bit more with these. I'm gonna switch back to my code folder. So I'm gonna go CD, and then I say CD code, there we go. So let's say I wanted to make a new folder in here. So let's go to right here, we'll go to create folder, We'll give it a name of test GUI. And now if I search for it over here, if I just do LS, you'll see I have test GUI, great. But let's say I wanted to create like three folders. I could come over here. I could right click, I could create folder. I could right click, create folder, right click, create folder. And again, switch back and forth from my mouse to my keyboard. Or I could say mkdir test one, test two, test three, 
And now I have them all here. And if I go back and I probably, oh, nope, I don't. Sometimes you have to refresh. It just depends on the, uh, on the file manager and how it's feeling. But you'll see, I have all three of these here. This always ran with one command. And I could have went over here and I could create folder test four. I could go and do that, but obviously that's going to slow you down. Unless your folder name can be typed with one hand on the keyboard, it gets a little difficult to have both the mouse and the keyboard and going back and forth. Or not difficult, but it can be time consuming if you're needing to create four or five folders in a row. And lastly, similar to this, let's go into test GUI. And so we'll go over here and go to test GUI. So similar to this, if I want to create a file, I can say right click, create document and empty file. And I can say, sure, we'll, we'll use that. A new empty file. That's great. So if I want to create another one, I could say empty file. We're going to call this test.txt. And now we get test.txt. Great. This kind of works. But again, if you need to create multiples, I could say touch test4.txt test5.txt test6.txt. I could also just do touch and then example.org example2.sql. So I could have all of these files and they will all be out there now without having to constantly, again, switch back and forth from my mouse to my keyboard. This can be really useful at times. If I wanted to delete these, I could right click and delete. And I also could, of course, delete them from here. So I could just say rm example.org and now it's gone. When it comes to certain actions, there are definitely times where it can feel a bit more cumbersome to do it in the terminal. For example, if I wanted to zip these files up, I'm probably just gonna highlight them, right click, create archive, and then name it whatever I want. To zip these, I would have to go in and actually enter each individual file name, and that would probably not be as fast. I mean, maybe if you're a really fast typist, then yeah. But for most people, they're going to be fine coming over and doing this. But my point is that while it may seem like the terminal is kind of a silly thing and people get so caught up in using it, there are reasons why people end up using it. And there are times where it may be very advantageous for you to use it. This is barely scratching the surface of what you can do. You can actually create scripts to do things automatically for you. So it may seem daunting at first, but as you get more comfortable with shell commands, you can start doing things like creating bash scripts where it can potentially save you a lot of time and automate a task for you. I have a video from you know a couple years ago where I was actually using a bash script to take a file, a video file, run it through FFmpeg and output a different version of the file that I could then use in DaVinci Resolve. So it's something where there are reasons that you may want to start learning the terminal at some point, even if you just learn these basics so that when somebody tells you to go in a terminal and execute a command, that it's not a complete foreign concept for you. I hope this has helped you kind of shed some light on what the terminal can actually do for you and also try to remove some of that abstraction that sometimes terminal commands can have. This is one way that I thought we might be able to look at this better, but what are your thoughts? Did this kind of help you understand anything better? Did you kind of see where sometimes the speed can be more helpful? Are there any other terminal commands you think would be useful to try to see in a format like this? Please let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching, have a great day, and I will see you next time.